Hey guys, what's going on? Tua Cruz here with... Tundes! We're here with Tuan-chan here in Ichinomiya, Japan, right by Nagoya in Aichi Prefecture. And we just finished with our ride today, and we wanted to show you guys our Japanese car, our tiny little Japanese car. So this is our Suzuki Wagon R. And we haven't shown this car too many times on our channel here, so we wanted to take the opportunity today to show you guys our car. This is actually our first ride fitting both of our bikes in the car and going out and bringing our bikes to a cycling course and going for a ride. So we just finished our ride and now we got to load our cars back up in the car and we wanted to show you guys the process and show you guys how our bikes actually fit in the car. Or can our bikes actually fit in the car? So this is a K car. In Japan, K cars are yellow license plates. So that means it's a lot smaller than a normal car. It fits within a certain regulation size. So let's open it up and show you guys the inside. It's a little bit messy right now, but it's a nice little hatchback here. So that opens up. So even though it's really small, it opens up and we get a decent amount of space, but it's actually quite difficult to fit some bikes in here. So first let's clear out some space here so we can bring our bikes in and I'll show you guys our sort of little difficult process. We brought our pump here as well. And the cool thing where we're at right now, this cycling course, this park actually has a giant free parking space. It's got this crazy tower here, 138 tower, and it's got an awesome cycling course and walking course. So we were just checking that out for the first time. The important thing here is our back seats fold down and the K car, it actually only has four seats. So there's two in the front and two in the back. It does not fit five people. So it's a little bit less wide than a normal car. And so we fold down both of these seats here. And I put this blanket down here just to protect the surface of the car so that way we keep everything safe. The next thing we want to do is get our bikes ready to go inside. So this is my road bike. This is my specialized Alay aluminum Kurokun. And this is my wife's bike, Tunchan's bike, her giant aluminum. So we're both on aluminum bikes today. And first we want to get our bottles out of here. These are full of sticky sports drink. So we'll get those off. And we'll take off a computer. This is my cycle computer. So today we rode 33 kilometers, about two hours. Not too bad. We were going at a nice leisurely pace. So let's put this up here and not forget it. And next thing we want to do is take off the wheels. So let's have Tuanchan put in her bike first. Dekiru? Huiru no hazu shi gata oboiteru? Mai ga oboiteru keda. Uh. Ushiro ga chato. Mazu mai no huiru hazu shite. We're still on quick release. Okay. 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 Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. So we're gonna put that in a, the small ring in the back. There we go, okay. All right, and same thing here. We're gonna loosen this up and we're gonna take off the back wheel. And I'm gonna do this part just because uh, she doesn't have too much experience with the rear wheel. And we wanna do this quickly. So we're just gonna take that off. Boom. That's a nice easy thing about rim brake bikes. Easy to work with, easy to fit in the car, and we're actually putting this in the car upside down. That's the best solution that I've found so far for this to work, so we want the chain to line up in here. Uh, please don't comment on how dirty our bikes are, we know. <laughs> and we're going to squeeze this inside. So Tunchan's bike is nice and small compared to mine, so this just fits in like that. And we want to make sure that the, the front fork isn't going to kill me when I'm driving, <laughs> and it just lines in nicely like this. So. Fortunately, we're really lucky this does not go in any further than that. And we've got this nice little towel slash rug thing here. And we use this to cover this bike so that when we lead them against each other, we don't damage the other bikes. So we also want to cover the dirty parts, the greasy parts. So that's what we're going to do right here. You also want to be careful with your pedals and you don't want those ramming into the window or anything. So this also helps protect against that. So here we go, we got some nice protection around the, the rough parts of the bike and we should be good to go. Next, we gotta do the same thing with my bike. So here we go. It's 
So yeah, we're both still on 10 speed aluminum bikes. <laughs> we definitely are in need of an upgrade. There we go. There we Good go. Good job. Good job. Oh, thank you. She doesn't just compliment herself. Line the chain up so it doesn't fall down on the frame. There we go. Okay. And my frame is a lot larger, so this is where the problem comes in with my bike. I really don't like having to adjust the seat post or anything, so we wanted a solution that allows both of our bikes to fit in normally. And you can see with both of them like this, it fits in just barely. And once we get both of these frames in here, I like to tie them to each other and hold them to this uh, old crap handlebar. That's what we call it in my hometown anyway. So I like looping a couple lines into the frame just to make sure that it's holding it tight. And we want to loop a couple through here as well. And we also want to loop this through her frame as well. So we're going to cut off the cushion a little bit, but that's okay. This doesn't need any protection. It's not bumping up against anything. And we want to make sure that there's enough pressure on here so that's holding it in place. This isn't going to really move that much. If you could put a bit more pressure on it, that'd be great, but this should be enough for us, I think. And we still want to make sure that we cover this back up so that we don't get any grease on any other parts of the car. But anyway, the sensitive parts covered, the part where the bike is in contact with the other bike, I made sure just the frame is touching the frame. It's not touching any other sensitive parts, but there's a cushion in between and we should be good to go. The last thing, oh man, rookie mistake. <laughs> good job. Oh. Good job. <laughs> oh man, she's calling me out. <laughs> Anyway, the last thing is we got to get our last few parts in here. So let's see how much space we have after we get the wheels in. And lastly, we're just putting these wheels in here. So I'm just putting them in a little bit aligned side by side like this. It would be great if you had a towel to protect them, but unfortunately we didn't bring enough towels this time. So we should be better prepared next time, but it shouldn't be too bad. I like to stack these next to each other like this because when they're stacked on top of each other, it puts a lot more pressure on the wheels, I feel. So putting them more vertically like this, it doesn't put too much pressure on them and there's not gonna be too much motion with these as well. And they're leaning this way, so we shouldn't have any problems with them turning over unless we do a sudden turn with the car or anything. But we didn't have any problems with them like this on the way over here, so I'm expecting it should be fine this way as well. And our last few tools here, we've got our important pump. You always wanna make sure you have your pump with you. And this just fits in nicely like this. We had some extra string just in case we needed it, but I don't think we need it. We had our pedal wrench. When we first came over, we took our pedals off, but I think they fit fine with just keeping the pedals on. And if we can reduce our amount of work, I'm all for that. So let's just put these back in here. Our bottles also fit in, no problem. And lastly, we can't forget about our helmets. So for our helmets, I like to just sort of hang these up here as well. And there we go. So what do you guys think? This is what it looks like with everything filled in here. So we've got two full road bikes in here with their wheel sets and still plenty of space to spare. If we needed to, we could fit some other suitcases down below here and put the wheels on top of them easily. So the two of us for sure can go on some easy road trips with this tiny little car and everything just fits in here nice and easy. But what do you guys think? Is there a better way to optimize this and make it better? Let us know down in the comments if you have any suggestions. Ne, kore. 初めて2人の自転車を車に持っていて。この車はもう1年以上。<laughs> yeah, we've had this car for over a year, and this is our first time going on a a cycling trip together, bringing both the bikes in here. I've gone and brought the bike with me as well, like I had when I had to go places for work, but we never really had opportunities to go to different places together because I was always busy with work. She was also busy with work, so when the weekend came, we were just too tired to go anywhere. But now we have a nice solution, so we can go to places nearby. Anyway, let us know guys if you have any suggestions on places you'd like us to visit that are a nice short drive nearby. We have some places on our list. We'd like to go back to Biwako, Lake Biwa, mm -hmm. um, Hamamatsu. Mm -hmm. There's some nice places nearby mm -hmm. that we really want to go check out. But today was fun. We had a fun time over here at the 138 Tower in the cycling course here. So check out our last video in case you haven't seen it yet. And it is getting dark. We're about to get kicked out of this parking lot, I think. So we got to get out of here and on the road. So anyway, it's been fun. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time here on T-Wheel Cruise. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.